Yo, how's it going everybody? So in today's video, I wanted to show you guys how to create this cool looking slick loading animation when you're trying to get some data from an API. So right here we have this waving animation and then when our data is ready, it displays it. And a notable use case of this actual loading method is uh, pretty prominent in the YouTube app where when you initially load it up, you'll see that there's some content that's not visible yet. And so you'll have that waving animation for certain videos. And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Cool, so I went ahead and created a basic React app. And the first thing that we're gonna have to do is install Material UI into our project to make it look as authentic as possible to the original. So I went ahead and opened up the documentation. The link is in the description below. And I went ahead and went to this page, getting started slash installation. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and install Material UI with Emotion and Styled into our app. All right, perfect. Now that that's installed, I'm going to go ahead and go into components and find card right here under services. And I'm going to go ahead and copy a basic card. So I'll go get this one, this media one right here. It'll get the job done. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy all of this since we're going to use all of it. And I'll just paste it. Well, I have to actually create a new component. So I made this folder called components and inside of there, I'll create a new file. And I'll call it card.js and I'll paste the code inside of there. So now we have it available. And just to make sure that everything is running, I'm gonna go ahead and import it into my app.js file, the main one right here. And I'll, and it's called media card. So I'll import that, so media card. And I'll go ahead and run our app and we should see a basic uh, material UI card. Awesome, so now we see that we have a card created and imported. Now we have to do is actually uh, install a package called Axios. This is what is going to allow us to get some data from an API. We can use fetch, but I just like using Axios. Um, you can use fetch if you do feel like it, but for tutorial sake, I'm just going to use Axios today. So I'm just going to do npmi Axios and let that install. And I'll also import it underneath all my import statements. So I'll do import Axios from Axios. And I'm going to also need a use effect and use state for this tutorial. So I'll do import react and we also want use effect and use state. And I'll go ahead and save that. Awesome, so now I'm gonna go ahead and minimize my terminal since we don't actually need it. And so inside of my export default function, I'm gonna go ahead and import, well, create all of our use state uh, variables that we need. So I'll do const data set to data and we're going to set it to actually null instead of an empty array and I'll do const is loading and set is loading so this is going to be used to determine whether the API data has been loaded or not loaded yet and I'll set it to false underneath all of this I'm going to create our function called called const get data and I'll set it to async and inside of there, what we're going to do is we're going to do await axios.get. And we're going to be using an API called random user, uh, dot me, which allows us to just get a random user. So I'll do HTTPS colon double slash random user dot me slash API. And I'll do a dot then, whoops dot then and I'll do res instead of response as a shorter way and inside of here I'm going to set our set data variable right here to be set data and we'll set it to res dot data and that's it and we'll also do set is loading to be true so allow me to quickly explain what we've done so we've created this function called get data and we're getting a access request from this API uh, called random user. And all we're doing is we're setting this set data use state variable to be the data that we get from the API, which is res.data. And we're setting set is loading to true. So that means that when the API data is done and is ready for us to do whatever we want with, we can just go ahead and set loading to be true. 
And underneath all of this, I'm going to create a use effect just to be able to quickly run it once and not having to worry about it. And I'll do, and I'll call get data right here. All right, so to actually test out if we are actually getting some data from our API, I'm going to go ahead and replace this image with the random user image that we get. And to do that, I'm going to get curly braces and I'll do data question mark dot results index zero dot picture dot large and this should ideally give us a large random randomly generated user image and so if we test it out we will see perfect so now we're getting a random uh, image which means that we connect to the API which means now that we can create our skeleton loader awesome so now we have everything in place and now what we're gonna do is execute our loading animation and to do that simply all I'm gonna do is add curly braces and we're gonna create a ternary operator so I'll do is loading question mark and I'll do curly braces colon and inside of the first area right here I'm gonna go ahead and add our card media which is this bad boy right here and else we want to display our basic skeleton animation loader and what that's going to look like is skeleton with a self-closing brace and inside of there I'll give it a variant is equal to whoops, rectangle animation is equal to wave width I'm going to give it 345 and height to be 200 so this will be equivalent to how tall oh yeah we need to also edit this too so so this will be equivalent to how tall and long our image is right now and we also need to import it so skeleton doesn't want to import i guess we'll just manually we'll have to manually import it so to do that all we have to do is import curly braces skeleton e l e t o n from at mui slash material and that should give us what we want so if i test it out we should see really quickly a gray animation i hope all right perfect and so to actually test out if this is working i'm going to go ahead and limit my uh, network speed manually so I'm going to go into network and click on the slow 3G and that should allow us to see it in action. Perfect. You can see that little wave come and go. And since my internet is so slow and my computer actually sucks, that's why the image loaded and there was like a weird white, um, a weird white background. Uh, so now what we're going to go ahead and do is complete our entire things. We'll have our title and the user's, uh, this random user's email and phone number. Cool. So now to edit the content, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this lizard title. And I'll do, uh, well, we want to cover the typography too. So I'll do is loading right here. And instead of here, is where we'll complete the ternary operator. So what I've done is, uh, if everything is true, we should show our topography. If it's still loading, then we should show a skeleton animation. And so inside of our topography, all I'm gonna do is data, oops, data and data dot results, oops, dot results, zero with index, name dot first, and name dot last. Um, if you want to know how that gray uh, autocomplete was happening, there's a plugin called GitHub Copilot, which is really awesome. But it sort of scares me that I think I'm going to go obsolete later in like my career. <laughs> um, anyway, so now we're going to go ahead and import skeleton with a self-closing brace. And inside of there, I'm going to do same thing, animation, wave. Uh, we're not going to give it a uh, rectangle or anything, so I'll do height. Give it about 40, should be enough. Uh, width at 80% and I'm going to do style to have margin bottom at 6 but I'm going to also center it so it's not just all pushed to one side so I'll do margin left auto and margin right auto 
And so now if we test it out quickly, we should see this title with their user's first and last name. It'll be a little slow because I manually made it slow. All right, perfect. So now we can see that we actually had that animation there. Now we're going to go ahead and cover this content up right here with uh, users, uh, email and phone. And so to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and copy uh, this loading right here and I'll replace this and I'll call this variant right here body2 and I'll do email and phone and since we had uh, since we have two different pieces of content here I'll add a break tag in between yes that is fine I think oh did we edit the first one? Oh, we did edit the first one. Oh, my bad whoops okay so I accidentally edited the first one so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some spaces in between here so we can easily see the difference so I'm gonna go ahead and replace this variant with body2 and I'll do name so I'll do email and we'll add, we'll add a basic break tag right here and I'll do phone let's get rid of this right here and since we added a break we're gonna need two different skeletons so I'll go ahead and copy this twice and I'll do instead of 40 I'll do 10 and 10 and it's being read on us so I'll just cover this bad boy in a div like so right there and now if we test everything out we should see that we have a pretty cool loading animation happening with all of our content hopefully fingers crossed that is Perfect, so now we have our image, title, and we saw two pieces of content right there. Again, uh, why is our data not showing? I think I know the reason. Oh, that's why we did dot name dot email, which makes absolutely no sense. Now, if we try it out, we should see everything there, hopefully. So we'll have our image with a wave animation, we know that, and we'll have our title with the wave animation. And now we have two pieces of content, email and phone number. That should have small animations right there, perfect. Now everything works. Awesome, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you guys did enjoy it and helped you out, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.